What's going on, everybody? This is Terrell Friday from Future DDS. And today on the DSE series, we have Ms. Jade Lopez from Howard University College of Dentistry joining us. How you doing today, Jade? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thanks for taking some time out. Uh, speak with us, you know, amidst all the COVID stuff that's going on. Thank you uh, for sure. I hope you're staying safe and, and your family's safe. Yes, trying to. I hope you too. The same for you. Thank you. Thank you. So if you could, you know, just uh, give us a brief reintroduction to yourself. You know, tell us, uh, reintroduce yourself. Tell us where you're from, where you went to undergrad, what you majored in, and then uh, also what year you are in dental school now. All right. So hello, my name is Jade. I am originally from Florida. At undergrad, I went to University of South Florida, and currently I am at Howard University for dental school. I am in my second year. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that's all that you asked. <laughs> okay, what'd you major in? Major in Howard? Yeah, so I majored in yes. health sciences. Sorry. <laughs> I majored in health sciences with a concentration in biological health sciences. Got you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. And did you take any time off before you started dental school? I did. So originally that was not my major. Okay. Um, I was on the biomedical route and it didn't, it just didn't work out. Um, so I had to expand my four years. So I graduated four and a half years instead of graduating the spring 2017, I graduated fall 2017. And from then I was supposed to, I guess, shadow a dentist and he asked me if I actually wanted a job. So mm -hmm. then from there, I decided to become a dental assistant from that second semester off that spring 2018 and then I got into dental school for fall. Got you. Nice. Well congrats. It worked it seemed to work out for you. <laughs> yes. Congrats, definitely. Um so I guess you know this is the burning question that a lot of pre-dents have. Um what is the your number one tip for doing well on the DAT? For the DAT, yeah I think you have to you definitely have to be real with your strengths and your weaknesses. Okay. For me, I knew the sciences was a problem and I had to find at least a course that was going to help me and guide me in the proper way to understand, okay, what are the concepts you're not getting or what are the practice questions you're not getting? For me, the PAT was pretty good. It was pretty chill. I didn't do too much of that. And I like math. So I was like, okay, math is fine. We can do that. But definitely being real with yourself. If you're not scoring where you want to score, score and your exam is in a month, then you need to reevaluate and take a step back and say, okay, what am I missing? What do I need to do? Got you. Got you. And uh, what, I guess, what resources did you use? If you remember, did you use like a program? Did you just find questions online? Did you use a book? Like, how'd you do it? So I did, I prep dental. I heard okay. that Kaplan for some people didn't really work out. Right. So I was stressing out because I knew, like I said, the sciences weren't too good for me. Mm -hmm. um, with the I prep course, it's a little, it's a little costly, costly yeah, a little bit a little bit. Um, <laughs> but I still like, <laughs> I still liked it because she took us through the sciences and she really broke it down and gave you tips and tricks for that. So I prep dental was a course he used. And with that, um, it came with another thing. I'm not really, I can't really remember at the time right now. Boot camp, boot camp there. That's what it came with too. Okay, got you, got you. Okay, so, um, so for specifically for Howard, you know, I know a lot of people is like it's kind of like a buzz buzz name school out there. So I guess, um, do you guys have any type of for, or I guess programs or feeder programs, enrichment events or anything like that for prospective students who are specifically looking at Howard? Um, I would say the biggest one would be the SHPEP program. I think not a lot of schools actually take part in it, which is the Summer Health Professions Education Program. Okay. Um, I think when I did my research, it was about like 12 out of 67 schools actually take part in this. So that's pretty wow. crazy. But um, our, our school offers about medical, dental, nursing, and pharmacy for those type of things. And they really do look at those students who are coming and making a hard, like, coming and making a choice to decide like, hey, this is what I want to do. Let's look at the course a little bit more rigorously. Um, SNDA Impressions Day, a lot of SNDA um, organizations definitely have those and we take those seriously too. Well, not too like seriously, but right. yeah. um, it's good to show face and get to know people because the dean's there, all the deans are there. So it's also a great thing to do. Um, I would say those are the two biggest ones. Okay, awesome, awesome. And um, so for you in particular, you know, after you realized that you you kind of wanted to go to Howard. At least you put it on the on the radar for all the schools. Like, how many schools did you actually end up uh, putting on your short list of schools to apply to? So I feel like my story is a little bit unique because my GPA, science GPA, okay, okay 
it was not good. So it wasn't. Okay. <laughs> I was really praying this the cycle that I was applying for so I applied once and did get in thankfully but I didn't want to apply to like 20 schools knowing that I probably didn't stand that good of a chance right. so I applied to seven schools and those seven schools were schools that I was like if I get in I'm signing it put me in a school this is where I want to go no matter what and <laughs> Howard it. was one of them for sure so okay. it was a no-brainer when I got in nice 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 so how was your uh, your actual interview experience at Howard you know could you walk us through the day kind of give us a feel of how you felt and, you know, how you felt going through the day and your overall impression of it. Right. So Howard was the third at the last interview that I had. Um, I, it was in the later, like April, actually. Oh, wow. It was April. Um, so it was in April and we had a, let me see. So we came in, we went upstairs to like the fifth floor and there's this office type of room and there are only three other people that were interviewing the same day as me. So we're getting to talk to each other. There are some like chairs of different departments that were there too, like orthodontics, um, restorative. So they were there also to be interviewers. Um, so we just chatted a little bit and then we had to write an essay. And for the life of me, I tried to remember what the essay was about, but I really can't remember. Um, but we had to write an essay, and I was not prepared for that. So that was funny when they're like, here you go, write this essay. I was like, hmm, did not do my research enough, I guess. Okay. But it worked out well, because I'm here. Yeah, um, you made it here. That's all, that's all that matters. Exactly. Um, so I had to write that essay, and then they asked if anybody wanted to volunteer to interview. And I was like, yes, me, please. We have to go. This is my school. <laughs> Um, so it was two professors and myself. So I didn't have a student in my interview process. Um, I was feeling very confident by then. I was like, listen, Howard, you got to let me in. Okay. This is going to be us. It's going to be us. So I feel like at the beginning, they were really trying to like, you know, grill me on like, well, why is your GPA so low? Um, what do you actually like about our school? What's our mission statement? What's our vision statement? Does it align with yours? And then when I'm like answering it right after they're giving it to me, I feel like they relax a little bit. They're yeah. like, okay, so what's different from our interview process from their others? And what do you see yourself doing here? And all those good things. So I think I broke the mold a little bit after interviewing. Yeah. So it, it went well after that. And then we had a tour of the school and then it was done. And then we heard back in a week. Got you. And just, just like a, a, I guess a general tip for everyone out there. Did you feel like, um, you know, it was important um, to definitely review your application and your resume and everything so that you can, you know, validly and, and effectively defend, you know, those maybe if you had like a, a negative point on your resume or a negative point on your GPA or something like that you feel you feel, like I guess do you feel like preparing for that beforehand or how do you kind of kind of put yourself into a mindset knowing that you know they might look at your GPA a certain way or or something like that how do you kind of address that yeah so I have a really good support team so I'm really thankful for that and okay. they I guess I sent them my app because you can download it so I sent them my application told them to look through it and ask me questions like, what do you think they're going to ask? And they were hitting me with the heart that they're like, your GPA is way too low. What do you think about that? I was like, are they going to come at me like that? I don't understand. <laughs> like that, yeah. right. So they were just hitting me with questions. So I was like, okay, so one, yes, I need to know my application. And they did have my app in front of them. So they're like flipping through the pages, looking okay. through community service and stuff like that too. So I'm like, can't lie. It's right there. <laughs> um, so definitely knowing your application front and back, don't lie. They're going to know. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, yeah. You have to review it for sure. Got you. Got you. Okay. So after, you know, you finish up the interview process, you finally get that acceptance letter from Howard, you know, you know, you realize you're going to be there. You put your deposit and everything. So now you show up. How is it that first year, you know, transitioning in the first year? How was it, you know, dealing with the curriculum? How was that set up? And then getting into the pre the preclinic and, and clinic. Right. Um, it was difficult <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. Um, so we had students in our class that took master programs, right? And we have students that are dental hygienists already. Mm -hmm. We have students that were dental assistants for a very, very long time. So me coming in there with my bachelor's, I'm like, I can do this. I just got my foot through the door. Mm -hmm. And then the wave of information came and I was like, so who's going to pass this? Is it me? <laughs> I need to know. I need to know these things. So it was, it was crazy. I was like crying because I, we had a quiz. I cried over a quiz. Okay. Anyway, um, we had a quiz, which was not really worth that much. And I was just terrified, petrified. I was like, I'm not going to make it out. And what I realized was for me, I'm a group studier. So you have to figure out how to study so you can get through it. 
um, the name of the game is really matriculation. Can you retain this information, apply it, evaluate it, assess it, all those different things, flip it around and still be able to understand and even break it down to somebody else's level so that they can understand the information. Yeah. So the whole first year was a learning curve in itself. Um, it does make me feel a little bit more confident. I'm like, okay, I made it through D1 year. Everybody, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Good um, job. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't mean it like that. But you know, it's like, yeah, it's right. difficult. It's not an easy thing. And I feel like at first when I was getting in, I was just thinking, I just want my foot through the door. I just want to get in there. And when I got in, I was like, actually, I want to matriculate. I want to understand. I want to be able to explain myself mm -hmm. in a good way that people can understand me too. So first year was crazy. It was crazy. <laughs> Got you. Okay. So how was, uh, how was the curriculum laid out? You said you had quizzes every week. So not every week. Um, but basically, pretty close. yeah, yeah. Um, the first, I feel like second year is worse though with quizzes. Like you just, every week there's like three at least, but for first year, um, we had exams basically every Monday or every other Monday. So we had that eight to 12, eight to one blocked out for exams on Monday, but you may not actually have an exam on Monday. It may be on a Wednesday or Thursday if it matches what that course is scheduled instead. But it was pretty consistent. Every Monday or every other Monday, you knew you had an exam to go to. Um, some courses did more quizzes than not the first year. Um, but yeah, it was mostly exams, like knowing that the heat was coming. Like, okay, here's an exam, get ready. And do you have, um, did, is it block style or is it no. uh, integrated? You, you have block, Tufts has block, right? Um, so it starts out block, but then it switches to integrated. So the first semester we'll do like, um, like anatomy, biochem, and like clinical anatomy, I think all of this kind of block style. Mm -hmm. And then you'll start to add in the integrated classes starting second semester. So it's, it's, it's weird how, it, how it's kind of set up. We don't start integrated system, systems based learning until second semester and then from there it's all the way through until uh into second year oh well yeah. we don't have block we just have like a semester and oh, wow. okay you got anatomy you've got ethics you've got intro to clinical you have this you have 20 something credits a semester do it and finish in the summer when we started operative dentistry as like a rising d2 that's when some of the classes started falling into the fall so you'll end like operative dentistry in the middle of fall and you'll start fixed prost and dentistry in the second half of the fall semester so it was kind of like that but it was not block schedule i feel like we should have blocks but anyway. <laughs> i mean they both have their their pros and cons for sure you know uh i guess the block you know you you build up for these so many weeks and then you have a a, a big test so it can be a, it can be a really um I guess nerve wracking. You could say that it could be nerve wracking for a lot of people. But um, okay, so how do you guys get introduced into the preclinical part? You say you guys start operative second year. Do you guys do anything? Um, I guess like wax ups and stuff like that first year. Yeah. So I feel like Howard is every year it's changing a little bit so that we can get more preclinical experience. Okay. For us, some things that like the current D threes that they didn't do would be things in dental materials, which is the second semester of first year okay. so we're like learning how to do more like dub rubber dams we're learning how to do that we're learning like what is actually isolation like or did you actually isolate the tooth or not like where are you missing things so i would say the spring semester of your d when year, you're learning those type of stuff but you're really getting hands on in the summer of your d one year which we call rising d2 um that's when you're in operative you're in the sim lab you're actually drilling now got you okay okay so um, moving on from there, we got a few more questions as we as we start to wrap up. Um, I know you only have your one dental school experience, but what is something that you feel like is unique to the Howard dental school experience? Um, I feel like just Howard being one of the only two like HBCU dental schools makes it something unique. It makes it something special. It's a culture there. It's a type of comfort there as well. Um, so I love that about Howard. I also like the small class sizes. So our class sizes, they don't really exceed 80. Um, I don't even think they really exceed 75 per class. So I'm definitely a more interpersonal type of person. Like we have to 
you, I have to know that you're, I'm going to be able to reach you and you can reach me as well. So I love that the class sizes are small. Um, we do have a lot of mission trips in the summer. Um, we're hoping that those will still happen this summer. We'll see. Um, right. Um, but also what I like about the mission trips too, that if you have connections in a certain area that you know needs help or they need people to be there to help with dentistry you can help make that connection and faculty will be like okay this is what we need you to do um, let me help you with this area do they have a clinic over here do we have to set up like that so I love that opportunity where they're like well you want to do it then let's work with it let's see what you can bring to the table um, and the last thing is that Howard just just pushes you okay they're just gonna push so <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how else to say it, but they just push you. That's all. That's all. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Okay. So now we're going to, we're going to come to the last question. Um, and that is if you could go back now um, and tell yourself the younger version of yourself while you were still grinding and, uh, you know, still applying to dental school, if you go back and tell that version of yourself, any advice, what would that advice be? I feel like during undergrad, I would tell myself it's not, just about getting your foot through the door it's about matriculation it's about can you keep up with the coursework um i feel like a lot of people kept telling me you just have to get your foot through the door and that's my mindset i was like okay i'm just gonna whatever i gotta do just get my foot through the door and that i don't think it was that good for me i could have done a master's probably should have done a master's i think it would have been a little bit easier um but still thankful for the opportunity and the seat to be able to sit with my class um, if I'm thinking back just while applying, it's to remember that nobody knows myself, especially on this application, better than me. I know myself. I know what I want to do. I know why I'm here. I know why there is a place for me in dentistry. So to believe in myself and to have more confidence and be like, walk through those doors and let them know because they got your paper. They're here to meet you, right? They're trying to put the whole picture together. Believe in yourself. You got it you know you want to be here <laughs> for sure for sure couldn't say it any better myself uh but again i just want to say thank you thank you so much um again jay for you know sitting down with us and giving giving these great uh words of advice and, and these gems to the pre out there i'm sure it was extremely helpful uh for, for everyone watching out there oh thank you thank you for having me i really appreciate it you guys this is the best channel ever okay that's it I'm man <laughs> thank you appreciate that <laughs> no problem <laughs> So, I mean, if anybody has any questions for you about Howard or for you about your personal journey or just want to pick your brain a little bit, um, how could they best get in touch with you? I do not check my emails. Okay. I check my Instagram all the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my dental page Instagram is getting dental with it. So G-E-T-T-I-N dental d-e-n-t-a-l with w-i-t-h it's i-t so if you just inbox me there i'm always checking it always keeping up to date with that um but that's the best place instagram <laughs> okay perfect so we'll make sure we put that down in the description so everybody can get in touch with you personally but on behalf of future dds uh tyler myself and all the community out there watching again thank you oh no problem this is great Awesome, awesome. So, you know, everybody else out there, you know, um, again, thanks, Jay, for, for giving us some great information on Howard. If you guys have any questions for Tyler and myself, um, you know, about our journeys or just in general, go over to Instagram, follow us at underscore future DDS and send us a DM there. We'll be able to get back to you as soon as we can. Um, and if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, the like button, and the notification bell so you know whenever we post some new content. That's going to be it until next time. See you guys later. All right, now, Jay. Bye.